Today, I'm going to be sharing how to interpret food webs. This is such an important topic in ecology, and we talk about this in my seventh grade life science class. Interpreting food webs is really important because it shows the flow of energy through a food chain and a food web. So I want to talk about what are the differences between those two things. The first thing is a food chain. And in a food chain, we're looking specifically at the feeding relationships with just one group of organisms in an ecosystem. And in this example, you can see that a food chain is the sequence of transfers of matter and energy in the form of food from one organism to another. So there is one food chain starting with the fern. The fern is the plant that is being eaten and the energy is being transferred to the grasshopper. So whenever you see these arrows in a food chain, and one thing my students often confuse, what we're showing is that when the fern is eaten by the grasshopper, the grasshopper is receiving the flow of energy from that fern. And then the grasshopper is consumed by the frog. The frog gets the energy from the grasshopper and the frog is consumed by the python and the python gets the energy from the frog. So this is just one feeding relationship. However, we know that in most ecosystems, let's say for instance, the python, the python might eat multiple things in that food web and it does in real life. So a food web is showing more of those feeding relationships and it's the natural interconnection of food chains and a graphical representation of what eats what in an ecological community. So this is a more realistic picture of all the organisms in this ecosystem that are all competing with each other for food. So this competition means that there's a limited amount of prey and they're all fighting for the same resources in that given ecosystem. And again, we're looking at all of the arrows and the transfers of energy in this ecosystem as each organism is eating and getting what it needs. However, we know that not all organisms are eating and consuming. We have two different types of organisms. We have our producers and we have our consumers. Our producers, we've learned, are plants that get their energy by capturing the sun's energy and light and then transforming that into glucose and they use carbon dioxide and water to be able to do that and we know that process is known as photosynthesis so they're able to harness the sun's energy create their own food and produce it which is why we call them producers whereas our consumers are those organisms that are consuming food, which makes sense, right? So they consume, they eat, they take it in. But we've got four different types of organisms that consume food. The first is an herbivore. And the herbivore is like a grasshopper. The grasshopper is eating only plants and the grasshoppers love to eat obviously grass. They also eat vegetables, flowers, but they only consume and their body can only handle that type of food. Then we have our omnivores, which eat both plants and animals. And this toucan right here is a perfect example because they may eat worms, which would be an animal, but they also might eat fruits and vegetables and nuts and things that they can find. This jaguar is a good example of a carnivore, which only eats animals. And carnivores are those usually top predators in an ecosystem, like a shark, a jaguar, and they only consume meat and they do require a lot of that energy as a top predator. And then lastly, we have our decomposers. Our decomposers like the bacteria shown here, they help break down dead organisms. And this may seem like a gross part of an ecosystem, but it is so important because this is where all of that energy gets recycled back into the ecosystem. So those dead organisms, their energy does not go to waste and the circle of life ensures that we're returning that energy back into the ecosystem. And it's a great way to recycle the nutrients back into the food chains and the food webs. 
The next thing I want to show you is how we interpret a food web itself. There's a lot of different questions that you might be asked when you're looking at a food web. And previously, I mentioned that we have our producers and we have our consumers and we have different types of consumers. So in this food web, for instance, we can look and we can look at the shrimp and we can see that it eats the algae because the arrow is pointing from the algae to the shrimp, which means that the shrimp is eating the algae and gets that energy as it's transferred. We can also look at omnivores in this that are eating plants and animals. We can look at carnivores like the dolphin that is only eating animals. And there are no decomposers necessarily in this one. But the next thing is we have to be able to identify our primary consumers. We know that producers like algae in this food web is getting its energy from the sun and it produces its own food. So all energy in all of our ecosystems and food chains and food webs originates from the sun. And then we have our primary consumers. Our primary consumers is any organism that is eating a plant. They're the first organism to consume something in this food web. And I can see that the shrimp is consuming the algae. The sea urchin is also consuming the algae. And then we have the pinfish consuming the algae as well. So you're just looking for that first organism that's eating a plant. In many food webs, there might be multiple plants that are being consumed. And any animal that's eating that plant, that's a primary consumer. Then we've got our next level, which is secondary consumers. Secondary consumers are going to be an animal that's consuming an, another organism that consumes plants. So let's use the shrimp in this example. The shrimp is consuming the plant. So that's the first consumption that's happening. And then the smooth toadfish is also consuming the shrimp. That's the second consumer in that food chain. So therefore we call it a secondary consumer. Now we could look at lots of secondary consumers in this example, like the spotted sea trout also eats the shrimp that eats the algae. The next one is a tertiary consumer. In some food webs and problems, you might see a top predator. And a top predator is those animals at the top of the food chain, like humans or lions or dolphins or bears. Oh my. And so in this one, tertiary consumers are any organism that is the third consumer in that food chain. So let's use the shrimp again. We'll say the shrimp is the primary consumer. We'll go up to the smooth toadfish. And then the smooth toadfish is consumed by the Goliath grouper. So the Goliath grouper is a tertiary, meaning third consumer. But also the dolphin is a tertiary consumer because we can see the arrow going from the smooth toadfish to the dolphin. So those are some different questions you might be asked in a food web. We may be asking about if it's an herbivore, an omnivore, which means what types of things do they consume? Or we might be asking, which number are they in that food chain? Are they first, primary, secondary, second, or are they tertiary, third? This video, I hope, has helped you interpret food webs and given you a little bit of a start. And if you'd like to get some practice problems that go along with this, I have a Google form that goes directly with this, and students can work through some practice problems using these images to interpret food webs and it auto grades itself. Let me know if you have any questions or if there's any things that you would like explained in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe to this video and you can check back with my channel to find more videos just like this.